Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in today. Today I'm going to be talking about iSCSI port binding with VMware vSphere and VMware ESXi. But first a quick note, this video is designed to supplement blog posts at the Tech Journal, my personal technology blog at stephenwagner.com. If you haven't already been, make sure you check it out. I've got tons of cool content on there. If you like this video, please make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe. So today we're talking about iSCSI port binding, particularly why and when to use it. iSCSI port binding is used uh, to essentially bind an iSCSI software initiator on VMware, uh, vSphere, particularly uh, ESXi, to a particular VMK, VM kernel, NIC network adapter. Um, the, one of the reasons why I decided to do this video, I actually did a blog post back in uh, June of uh, 2016 where due to other posts that I was doing with uh, various SANs such as the HPE MSA 2040, uh, I was getting quite a bit of traffic and uh, people reaching out via comment, email, asking about uh, issues with their environment. And in the majority of the cases, I noticed that uh, even trained professionals, they were using iSCSI port binding in the wrong situation or scenario. Uh, most of the time I could just explain to them what to do and how to resolve these issues. But it finally got to the point where I was thinking, you know, if this many people are, if these many people are having this issue, I should uh, do a blog post and address it. So I did it and it was super successful. People reached out like crazy. I'm still getting tons of traffic, even though the uh, blog post is about uh, six years old now. So, and it's one of the reasons why I finally decided to do this video. So why? The reason why we need to do iSCSI port binding is because in certain situations, if you have a VM kernel NIC uh, or more than one VM kernel NIC sitting on the same subnet, and, and this tr issue goes back to traditional environments, whether it's Windows Server or Linux. If you had a multi-home server, particularly um, with two NICs sitting on the same subnet, the system actually wouldn't know which NIC to tran transmit from. Um, I, I can't remember exactly which how it would choose, but essentially you'd have two NICs receiving and they would actually be listening on both IP addresses. But as far as transmission would go, um, in most cases, the host would actually choose a single adapter to transmit from. So you might be able to receive on both of those NICs, but you wouldn't be able to transmit. Uh, going back to VMware, you can see where this would pose problems, especially when it comes to uh, iSCSI SANs and connecting to an iSCSI target, especially when you want to implement something like uh, MPIO, uh, multipathing, uh, multipath input output. Now, this is where we get to, uh, as far as why goes, iSCSI port binding was created to address this. iSCSI port binding essentially binds the software iSCSI initiator to the actual VM kernel NIC. So now we go on to when to use it. In an environment where you have a SAN with multiple interfaces sitting on the same subnet and you're using multiple software iSCSI initiators sitting on the same subnet, you need to use the iSCSI port binding feature to bind the software initiator to each one of those individual VM kernel NICs that will be connecting to the iSCSI target or iSCSI LUN. And what that does is it binds it so that if it wants to transmit from one of those VM kernel NICs, it makes sure that it actually transmit from the NIC that it should be. So what that does is it actually allows MPIO to function properly and uh, take advantage of transmitting from both of those NICs, even though they sit on the same subnet. So with that being said, you would want to use iSCSI port binding in an environment where you have multiple NICs and uh, the SAN has multiple interfaces sitting on the same subnet. When you wouldn't want to use iSCSI port binding is when you have a SAN that has multiple interfaces sitting on different subnets and you have VM kernel NICs that are using iSCSI initiators on different subnets. Since they're on different subnets, they're transmitting on different networks. You don't need to use iSCSI port binding because the system will just be able to handle the, re the request to transmit and receive properly. If it wants to transmit on a particular subnet, it has to use that NIC that sits on that subnet. So there's no confusion. Therefore, iSCSI port binding isn't needed. Now, one thing that I really want to point out is that if you don't need iSCSI port binding, you don't want to use it because it can cause a whole bunch of issues with paths if you accidentally turn it on. 
So even though things might function with iSCSI port bi binding turned on in an environment with multiple subnets, you still don't want to do that because it's going to create a number of paths that aren't actually valid um, and it'll just kind of cause issues with your MPIO environment. So same subnet, iSCSI port binding, different subnets, don't use iSCSI port binding. On a final note, if you want to hire me or my company to help you out with anything that we've talked about in this video or anything else that you find on my blog, please don't hesitate to reach out to me via the Hire Stephen Wagner tab on the top of the blog, or you can visit my corporate website at www.digitallyaccurate.com. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment, and if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you very much, and have a great day.